Hi everyone, we are Team 39. Our project is face generator using DC GAN. We will be going over the following topics during our presentation. First, the introduction and motivation behind our project. Then the data set and environment which we use to train our model. Then the network structure, the results we obtain, and finally the challenges and conclusions. So since we are new to the field of machine learning, we thought of doing a project which is both interesting and fun to work with. Hence, we chose the project Face Generator. We implemented our project using Deep Convolutional Generator Adversarial Networks, or known as DC GANs. Also, previously we, we have worked on classification problems like classifying different stages of leaf building, which gave the results in either the form of true or false. But we wanted to obtain results in a more tangible way, like in the form of an image. Hence, we thought of doing this project of generating random faces. So the data set which we used to train our model was obtained from Kaggle, which was in turn a subset of a celebrity data set known as Celebly. This Kaggle data set contains around 100,000 images of cropped faces. We used Google Collab to execute our code and obtain results. So this is the data set which we used. In the left, you could see the Kaggle Celebrity data set, which is a subset of this data set Celebia. This Celebia data set contains around 200,000 images with over 40 annotations like eyeglasses, bangs, old face, smiling, mustache. So for our project, we just need a faces. Hence, this Kaggle Celebrity data set was generated from this Celebia data set by cropping the faces. So this Kaggle Celebrity data set has around 100,000 images which we used for our project. Now, Bhavitra will take over the presentation. To know more about DC GANs, first you have to know about GANs. GANs are general adversarial networks. General adversarial networks consist of a generator and a discriminator. What a generator does is that it takes a random model to input and tries to create or mimic the actual training data set and create fake inputs with the discriminator. What a discriminator does is that it tries to distinguish whether the input is fake or real, then both are fed to it. So this is, um, if it is able to do so, then the generator does a better job of for creating a mimicking the training data set. And this goes back and forth until we reach a point where the goal is our uh, goal we set is obtained, or the good loss function is obtained. Now to DC GANs. DC GANs are very similar to GANs, but the difference is that in place of fully connected networks, we have used a deep convolutional networks. What what is the meaning of this is that it is able to create a better spatial correlation in the inputs. So this is suitable for applications with images and videos. So we have chosen a DC GANs as our network here. So yeah. Now we will look at the structure of the generated networks we are using. To the, to the left, we can see a vector of size 100 of random noise inputs, which is being converted to an image of 128 cross 128. What the generator also contains uses the uniform distributed noise, also uses transpose convolution and batch normalization techniques. Uh, also, after each uh, batch normalization layer, we use a rail of activation function. And the final image is passed through damage activation to squash the pixel range between minus one and one. What is that? Basically normalizing the image, pixel range of the images. Next, we move on to the discriminator structure. What happens here is that uh, we go from 128 cross 128 to a zero or one input. Zero or one depicting um, it's a, whether it's a fake or a real image. Real image. Discriminator networks use a sigma activation function, which squashes the input from between zero and one. Already, we are using a normalized image uh, as input here with the pixel ranges between minus one and one, one instead of the usual zero to 255. So, the, uh, the output obtained, if it is close to one, the discriminator identifies the image as real image. If the output is close to the zero, the image is identified as fake image. Now, the results will be discussed by Krishna. Now let us look into the results of the project. The model was trained by varying different parameters like the number of epochs, the batch size, and the learning rate. 
we actually decided upon the learning rate for the discriminator and generator by trial and error the actual goal of the project is to train the model so as to achieve a discriminator loss of 0.5 and generator loss of 1 which means that the discriminator is no longer able to distinguish between a real and a fake image and the generator is producing images too good that the discriminator thinks that they are real so what we did is we varied the number of epochs from 5 to 40 and we tried two different batch cases that is 32 and 64 and we'll see the results now when we fix the batch size to 64 and we we train the model from 5 epochs to 40 epochs this is the uh, results we obtained when the model was uh, trained for 5 epochs we can see that the we can barely see a face but when the model was trained for 40 epochs we can see uh, that the generator is doing a pretty good job of generating a face. When the batch size is 64 and the epoch count is 40, the following plot for the generator and discriminator loss was obtained. We can see that the final uh, discriminator loss is 0 0.717 and the final generator loss is 0 0.641 after 40 epochs. Next, we tried with the batch size of 32 and the same epoch count that is 40 and we got the following results after 40 epochs and we can see that this is better than the previous result when the batch is of 64 and from the plot we can see that the discriminator loss is tending towards 0.5 and the generator loss is tending towards 1. After 40 epochs the final discriminator loss was 0.621 and the generator loss was 0.753. Uh, we faced a number of challenges uh, during you know, implementing this project and one of the main challenges was with, uh, running the project on Google Colab. When the data set was uh, containing 100,000 images, the model took a very long time to train and you know, that, con uh, that made us decide on a data set of say 60,000 images that uh, train for 40 epochs in 10 to 12 hours in Google Colab. So in conclusion, we were able to train the model to generate near lifelike images with discriminator loss of 0.621 and generator loss of 0.753 when the batch size was 32. Better results could be obtained when we try to you know, uh, train the model with along with annotations like age, sex, facial features and accessories. This way the uh, discriminator will also learn that the image, uh, the person in the image is wearing glasses or has a beard and the generator will also know whether to generate a face with a glass or uh, generate a female face or a male face. Thank you.